Peyton Manning's a pro and college football Hall of Famer, two Super Bowls, five MVPs, co-host of the Manning cast on ESPN2 with his brother Eli, host of the Capital One College Bowl. Season two of the Capital One College Bowl kicks off. Back-to-back episodes Friday, September 9th, 8 Eastern Pacific on NBC. The one and only Peyton Manning joins us. So um, through the years, I've I've had discussions about you with uh, people I consider friends, Bill Polian, um, it, you know, just different coaches that have known you, um, Eli Cooper, and you know, I, 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 I've said one of the things I like about Peyton is that um, Peyton really wins the game before the game. He's a prep monster. He's he, he likes his control. He likes his prep. A lot of guys are in my business. I'm I'm. Uh, a prep guy. Not everybody is. That's fine. I like control. I like to take the audience somewhere. In my early career, there were times, Peyton, that I thought I over-prepared and became paralyzed by my notes. And I, I'm sure somebody has asked you this before, but people like you who like control and live for prep, was there ever a moment, maybe it was Denver, where you thought, kind of got it down. I kind of get the rhythm. I'm going to go out tonight with my wife on Thursday. <laughs> Take me through that process because I think it's pretty well documented. You are, you changed the game intellectually. You kind of made everybody else prep longer. Was it always that way to the end? No, um, I definitely adjusted Colin. When I got to Denver for probably two reasons. One, uh, just coming off that injury, I had a whole year to kind of reflect and do a little self-analysis of uh, kind of my whole routine when it came to football. The, the, the rehab took so much time. And so obviously I wasn't watching a ton of film during that time right. while I was rehabbing. And in the, in the same year, I missed the entire season due to injury. Uh, um, Ashley and I had twins. So uh, that, that completely changed everything for me. Uh, it was a big reason – for us kind of waiting to have kids was, was because I, I knew that I was all in on football. You know, I hear guys saying they don't take it home with them. I think you have to take it home with you as a quarterback, yeah. right? I mean, staying up till 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning and studying film because I got to get that Dolphins Patriots game watched because we're playing <laughs> the Patriots this week. And I, you know, I have to get it watched. It's Tuesday night. If I don't get that watched, I'm behind. And that, that's how I, that's kind of how I rolled. Once I had kids coming home uh, after practice, especially those four years in Denver, it's a, it's a completely different deal. And um, I was all in on being a dad, still preparing and studying film. And don't, uh, don't get me wrong, but just being a little more organized with my time, maybe on my off days, on Tuesdays, the things that I was doing. And so uh, those four years in Denver um, were so much fun because I learned that you can you can be a dad and you can wrestle on the floor with your kids and still actually be a pretty good quarterback. So uh, um, I guess I wish I would have known that earlier. <laughs> well, I, I have uh, uh, a son and a daughter. They're totally different. Uh, my daughter's all about the journey. My son is kind of driven about the destination. He's talking about college when he was like 11 years old. And my daughter wants to kind of live and let live. So you and Eli are different personalities, Cooper, different personality. But what quality do you have from your dad? I mean, I know I know your dad, uh, really a genuinely decent soul, good sense of humor. Obviously, you're all bright and really witty. But if I said to you, OK, what did you take from your dad? What, what's the sauce? Yeah, I mean, my dad was a write things down list guy always. I mean, these are my post-it notes that I have in my pocket right now. Uh, <laughs> you know, eight different post-it notes, right? So I, I took that from my dad. Uh, he was a he was a list guy. He was a to-do list uh, for the week, a call list. Now, uh, once we taught my dad to text, watch out, world. My dad will text everybody. He will check in on people that are not feeling well, that somebody whose grandson had a high school game. You know, he is the best at keeping up with his friends. But I remember when it came to making tough decisions, he was a big list guy. Write the pluses and minuses down in front of you. Take a look at it and see if that doesn't help answer the question. I remember doing that 
and I was choosing where to go to college, choosing whether to stay for my senior year or to, to uh, turn pro early, and then choosing what NFL team to go play for after the Colts, you know, uh, sort of made their decision. So uh, I still do that today. I'm a planner. Uh, I am as good of a golf trip logistics organizer as there is. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to play good golf, but the, I mean, we're going to eat uh, on time. Uh, we're going to tee off on time, those kind of things. So uh, just kind of his organization. Um, and he was a prep guy as well. You know, my dad was an incredible athlete. Uh, but uh, uh, nobody was going to outwork him. And, you know, right. and to me, I kind of took uh, both of those things with him, except the fact uh, that I wasn't as good an athlete. My dad did not give me his speed, which I'm still mad about. He skipped the generation and gave it to his grandson. Well, he also needed it running on those Saints <laughs> offensive lines. This is true. This is true. I grew up with those. Uh, so there have been 11 quarterbacks since you left Denver, 12 since you left the Colts. And my belief on that is this that the great quarterbacks, almost all, not all, are not, they're not just quarterbacks, they're CEOs. So you're not replacing a player. You're replacing a player and a CEO. The great ones are. Uh, Elway, John had some of that. He, he, he was the CEO of the Broncos, and he was the player. You similarly. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, 23 quarterbacks. In fact, there's another one here where a receiver played quarterback, I think, for Denver briefly. We didn't count him. So 23 different quarterbacks. So I've gotten uh, shit through the years um, for saying this, but I, I've said before, it bothers me when I see a 19-year-old quarterback at the podium, hat on backwards, or they play to what I would call casually. They don't play with urgency. And I say this because in my life, almost all the great quarterbacks, they're not just quarterbacks. It's one of the reasons I, I liked Andrew Luck and I like Russell Wilson. Um that's off-putting to some people, right? Like when I hear about Arch, I think to myself, oh God, what a break. He's got all these CEOs, this lineage in his family. Was there ever a time when you played, because you were the adult in the room, did you ever have to check yourself and go, hey, I got to go have beers tonight. I I, I got to be one of the dudes tonight. I got to cut it up with the fellas. Absolutely. And look, I think you can do both. Um, I really do. And there's no doubt as a quarterback, they are paying you to do more than just play quarterback. They are paying you to stand up at that podium after a overtime loss where you threw an interception and to handle it and to, to say, um, Hey, um, I'm going to be better next week. I mean, I mean, you are uh, very much the face of the franchise when you're, you know, out in the community doing community service. I mean, that there is more than just the on the field stuff that comes with being a quarterback. And when you sign up, you sign up for all of it, right? Some guys just sign up for the, for the wins and the parades and the confetti, right? But um, <laughs> I believe you sign up for that six interception game you have against the Chargers uh, on a Sunday night game, right? Or to lose a playoff game in, in overtime. So, uh, but I still think for me as a quarterback, if you ever get too far away, from the locker room, from having beers with the offensive linemen on Thursday night that you're buying, by the way. If you're not buying, that's a problem, right? I mean, you're, you're buying their steaks, you're buying their beer. It is money well invested. Uh, if you ever get away from that, I think that could be an issue, right? So, you know, to me, the locker room, the camaraderie, uh, the friendships with your uh, teammates, and also, you know, in football, for an offensive player to stay close to the defense, I think is important, right? Uh you know, locker rooms are set up different ways. Like early on, they were always quarterbacks here in this section, offensive line in this section, defense on the other side. Now you see teams, everybody is all over the place, right? Because they want the team to stay close together. You know, the media can divide a team, right? you got the Colts defense, and then there's the Colts special teams, Colts offense. Actually, it's all the same team. So um, I always believed in that. And uh, so I think you can do both, Colin. I think having beers with the linemen is important. But I also think standing up there at a press conference and accepting responsibility and, and vowing to do better the next time is also important. So, you know, your name has come up. You're, for the audience, you have uh, Omaha Productions, which is uh, that you guys do a lot of B on B, business on business stuff. Very successful. You've had, you know, I don't want to get into your private investments, but you've done really, really well. 
But in those investments, I do feel like, and I know, I know you've been in a liquor business. You're currently in it. I am in it, uh, and you're very committed to it. You'll call the you'll call the bar owner. That's the game, right? You're a committed guy. And when your name comes up for front office jobs, I've said, yeah, he's got the commitment and um, and the intellect. That's not what I worry about. But it's being a GM's weird because you got often a crazy owner above you. And these guys are billionaires and nobody tells them no. The second thing is you played in this league. Some of it's guessing. Like you can do all the tape shit. Some of it, Peyton, is guessing. And somebody asked me once, I said, I don't think Peyton wants to get into the guessing business. And everybody says, oh, I said, I could see him being an owner. I could even see the coach thing a little, although he doesn't have the time. But I think a lot of people see you because of your intellect as a general manager. And for me, I've always thought, ah, there's a lot of moving parts you can't control there. How do you view it? Yeah, um, I don't see a GM in my future. Coach, I'm the offensive coordinator on my son Marshall's sixth grade football team. We got beaten overtime on Saturday. And uh, a couple of my players asked me why I ran the ball so much in the red zone. So I think coaching in my future is also <laughs> out. Because uh, hearing that from a couple of sixth graders was tough. Hearing that from a 32-year-old wide receiver or quarterback, hey, I haven't got the ball. What are you doing? Uh, I think that's out. Um, being a resource to to quarterbacks, to uh, to rookies, uh, to coaches, um, to general managers, I love doing that. And you know, in 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 the six years I've been retired, I felt like I've kind of been a uh, resource to a number of different people that have my number, either that I you know talk to about. Monday night football, the broadcast. I say, Hey, by the way, let me ask you something in the two minute drill. Did you call everything? Did y'all stay in the same formation? Seemed like y'all got a lot of plays in and I would just go, yeah, actually we did. We lined up in the same formation and that might be to Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers. And so I've enjoyed being that resource, uh, to lots of different people. And, uh, you know, if there was a team to be a resource for specifically, sure. Something like that, but a general manager, what, you know, John Lynch has done at San Francisco and George Payton is doing here in Denver. Hey, I'm not qualified to do it. I really don't think that I am. Um, and it's just not something that, that's in my cards. You're right. I mean, it is a gift. It is a talent. You are uh, going all in on a draft choice and you're behind him. And all of a sudden, two years in, you realize, golly, this guy's just not the player that I thought he was, right? Everybody's going to say you made this huge mistake. So, um, yeah, um, I wouldn't be good at the guessing, and uh, um, I don't see that in my cards uh, by any means. If there's – I think you and Eli are – well, you're obviously very funny. And I think Eli's got such a unique personality, and he's – you're both comedic. Um, his is just a slow play, and you're going 100 miles an hour. If I said to you – what what thing about Eli just tickles you that you just it's not in your genetic makeup. It, it's in his. And you're like, it's a damn gift. And it's just it's something that you really like. Obviously, you love your brother, but there's something about him, a tick, a, a uniqueness that you you're you're really fond of. Eli doesn't miss much. You know, you know sometimes he won't comment on something at the time. But if, if I do something on a golf trip in a conversation like uh, he's going to wait and he's going to, he's going to bring it up at a better time for him to expose me and make fun of me. Right. (laughs) You know, I'm more on the spot. I'm going to tell you, no, 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 no. I cannot believe you just said that. That is not true. I'm going to, I'm going to point out that you were wrong right away. Eli's going to wait. He's going to bide his time and he's going to bring this moment up in front of, Ashley, my parents, some old teammates, which, you know, you tell the teammates and that goes viral, right? Jeff Saturday (laughs) is calling Dallas Clark immediately and go, Hey, let me tell you what Eli told me that 18 did. Can you believe this? So it's, it's tactical. And, uh, um, as soon as, as soon as I do something, I know it's coming out. It's, it's going to come back to haunt me because he just doesn't miss anything. And, and so I think that was kind of always his personality on the field, right? Patient, 
kind of calculated. Uh, you know, people got frustrated. He wasn't more emotional and reactive. It, it doesn't mean he didn't care about it and he wasn't paying attention. Uh, he just sort of picks and uh, picks and chooses his moments. I, I want to ask you about uh, repetitions part of quarterback play, uh, the verbal repetition, the film repetition. Um, accuracy comes pretty easy to you. Um, it you know Joe Burrow feels like it just it comes easy. The ball yeah. comes out. Uh, Kyler Murray's got just a nice baseball rhythm to it. Um, I watched Trey Lance, <clears throat> and aesthetically, it's not pretty. Now, Philip Rivers wasn't, and he was pretty accurate. Right. You know, there's there's arguments about Josh Allen. So I, I watched two Josh Allen college games because I heard about this kid from Wyoming. So I watched the Oregon game and the Iowa game, and I'm like, oh boy, there's a this is a lot of work. This is a raw pony. Said somebody need he needs a trainer. And all of a sudden, you look up, and it's like, okay. <sighs> Matt Stafford's been really successful. He's about a 61, 62% completion guy. So you don't have to be you. You don't have to be Kirk Cousins. But do you kind of, where do you land, Peyton, on coaching accuracy? Where do you land on that? Because Trey Lance worries me. Yeah, look, um, I mean, the better timing you have with your receivers the more accurate you can be. Obviously, there's a better chance to consistently move the ball, right? Every time you receive a kickoff, I got an accurate quarterback. He knows where to go. He's play, he's been playing with these receivers for a couple of years. I think we can go 80 yards on every single possession, right? That's kind of how we felt when we played, right? We didn't care where we got the ball uh, on the kickoff. I mean, I used to get so mad at – you know, a, a block in the back on a kick return. I'm like, just get me to the 20. Get me to the 20, we can score, right? But starting on the 10, because you clipped, that, that was always annoying to me. And, and and that player never had to answer in a quarterback meeting room, right? Because he's probably like a safety that clipped that, you know, special teams meetings are separate. So anyway, I'm getting off subject. If you're not super accurate as a coordinator, you're going to have him, you're going to have to pick and choose your times when to take shots, when to try to have these explosive plays to shorten drives, right? It might be a, uh, you know, spread right throwback screen to Kittle that's going to get us 50 yards, and now we're in the red zone, and now we can maybe get a touchdown. So, uh, but for Trey, it, I mean, to me, it's about the reps, right? Anytime you're in quarterback competitions, right, or not getting on the field, your accuracy, your decision-making, your play is always going to be challenge right the best way to learn is on the field right I, I 28 interceptions as a rookie we won three games but what I learned in, in that rookie season I mean there's no way we're going 13 and three the next year if, if I don't play every game as a rookie Eli says that the six games he started with the Giants compared to the 10 he sat behind Kurt Warner no comparison at all right on the field Get in there, see just how fast these linebackers are, see how much ground these safeties can cover. And you don't really get that in practice. You don't get that in the preseason. You get that in games, right? And division games are faster than non-division games. Playoff games are faster than regular season, right? So, you know, for trades, just get them in there and let them learn, and hopefully you can win at the same time, right? The 49ers are used to winning, right? They're not looking for a – three and 13 season like you know first pick in the draft there's a reason that team's picking first in the draft Colin because they stink right you know and so right. uh that, that was tough for me as a rookie but I think the supporting cast around Trey Samuel Kittle I think they can give him a chance of success and I think Kyle Shanahan knows the position is to keep Trey in to give him a chance to be successful you know being successful it doesn't matter if it's Peyton Manning LeBron Drake, it doesn't really matter. You've had success. You have your wealth. You have your legacy. I think one of the great challenges is, are you still coachable? Are you still curious? Yeah. Everybody's curious as they're fighting like mad to belong. Everybody's coachable. Um, you got to a point where I think rhythmically, intellectually, you kind of changed it. Um, nobody ever talked about pre-snap stuff before Peyton Manning. They really didn't. My whole life, that just wasn't a discussion. 
you're going up with three audibles, different counts, and the great quarterbacks all sort of change it. I mean, to give Russell Wilson credit, we didn't even look at 5'11 quarterbacks like 10 years ago. I think he got some guys drafted. Um, so as you were successful, as you had a Super Bowl, because um, I do think there's a very few, but there's a handful of guys, Aaron, Tom Russell, not that you were harder to coach, was it harder to be coached when your way had proven to be all-time stuff? Did you ever look in the mirror and think, because I've thought about this, Peyton, I've thought, hey, man, don't get ahead of yourself. Listen, be curious, try new crap. Take me through that journey for you. Sure. Now, um, being coachable to me is is the only way to go about it. Um, I love being coached. I used to get angry when I wasn't coached, when in a, in a, in a meeting, watching the film, when, you know, I made a bad decision or my footwork was terrible and my quarterback's coach didn't say anything. And I'm like, Hey, wake up, like, you know, speak up. That was, you know, that was the wrong footwork, right? I stepped, uh, as in the shotgun, my first step was with my left foot should be with my right foot, whatever it may be. So I used to love being coached. I was coaching myself hard. Don't get me wrong. I was like every film, session that I ever went in, Colin, with the coaches, I'd already watched that film myself, right? I think that's a pretty good lesson for a quarterback. When you go into a meeting room with your offensive coordinator to watch the film of the game, you should have already seen that game yourself. You control the clicker. You're writing your notes down. So I was coaching myself hard, uh, but I wanted to be coached. I wanted to be corrected on my mistakes. I wanted to have someone stay on top of my mechanics, my fundamentals. At the same time, I wanted the coach to give me the freedom to to make a change if I saw something. I mean, Colin, there's this great debate. What's the best way to call plays? What's the best view? Is it in the press box? Is it on the sideline? Is it both of them are debatable, right? The press box is calming. There's not a lot of noise. You can probably make better decisions on the sidelines. You can look the players in the eyes on the sideline. You get to feel the game. Debatable. There is no debate that the best view is out there playing quarterback. You can see everything in real time. And if you see something and you know what it is to be able to change the play and get into a really good play or most often get out of a bad play. Okay. Right. We've been trying to run this play to the left. We finally call it. And all of a sudden their whole defense is shifted that way. Why are we going to waste the play? on that particular down and distance. Why can't we just check it and run the other way and then later maybe come back to that play to the left? And so, you know, half the time people used to say, oh, he's always trying to get him into the perfect play. Not true. Getting us out of bad plays because you only have about 60 in the game and five of them are going to be the difference whether you win or lose. So all right. of them matter and all of them count. So I wanted my coaches to understand that I was studying. I was going to work hard to earn that freedom to possibly change the play but at the same time on fundamentals and basic quarterback play I wanted to be coached hard so to me there was kind of a mix there uh, I, I want to shift because I love college football you love college football and I went to the USC game this weekend by the way Caleb Williams when you're live at the game man he is instinctive Peyton it's crazy like really? I good is like 1920. I, I couldn't believe how instinctive he was. Um, when I watch college coaches, uh, I, I always feel like 17 hours, 19 year old kids, just show me that you're not going to waste timeouts. Uh, show me you can manipulate personnel. Like my standard is lower. Um, when, when you look at some of these college quarterbacks, what do you look at? Like with Caleb, I'm like, wow, instincts are good. Same delivery system, short, flat, deep, seam, all looks the same. It's like a pitcher. Change up fastball, curve, nothing looks different. The batter doesn't get any uh, hedges or, or uh, ticks. So when you look, because we have five quarterbacks this year, they're entering their second year. And we're already seeing some tells. Some guys young, some guys not accurate. What do you look for when you see a college quarterback? 
it, you know, it's funny because I get to see a lot of these these kids in person at our football camp. We have this football camp for high school kids. It's called the Manning Passing Academy, but right. it's turned into sort of a, a, a double pay it forward and that we're coaching the high school kids. But this past year, we had 40 starting college quarterbacks that come wow. and coach the high school kids, that they're counselors in the camp. But in between practices, when the high school kids are eating lunch or, you know, taking a nap or taking a shower, Eli and I are out there throwing with these college quarterbacks or doing a chalk talk. We're not throwing anymore because, you know, no, no one wants to see five yard hitches uh, thrown all day by a 46 <laughs> year old quarterback, but we're kind of running the drills and I'm doing the same drills that I used to do. So look, you can get fooled by how impressive a guy is in what I would call routes versus air, right? You're throwing routes. There's no defense. There's no pass rush. There's no corner. And, guys can wow you and go, wow, this guy can really throw or he can really spin it, which is my least favorite term in all of football. He can spin it. I don't know what that means. Can he play? Can he lead? <laughs> can he boot the tanks? That's what I want to know, you know, spin it. Uh, so, you know, I mean, name somebody through the years. Matthew Stafford threw it as well as anybody we've ever had at the camp. Worked out for him. Andrew Luck, I remember – didn't throw it all that well. Now, because everybody knows who he is and they expect every throw to be a perfect spiral and right on target, you know, that probably works against Andrew because, you know, oh, he's not as good as I thought he was. Well, because you thought he was never going to throw an incompletion, right? Jamarcus Russell threw it as well as anybody we ever had. One time we were on the 20 yard line throwing out and he almost ran the receiver into the goalpost. My dad's like, you got to back up, Peyton. I'm like, Dad, he just threw it, you know, 85 yards. I didn't know he was going to throw it that far. You know, 47 yards is my maximum, you know, deep pattern. So you can get fooled in that. Bryce Young was there this past year, right? Didn't wow you with his, you know, arm strength or accuracy. But what impressed me about him is that, I mean, he is calm. He is cool. He is in control. And that's what you see translate on the field right so i'm looking for leadership i'm looking for presence and on the field i'm looking for decision making right do they make good decisions right that's what that's what really matters right you know wowing somebody in a private workout at the combine or at your own you know campus where the weather is perfect and you got your favorite song playing in the background to get you hyped up that doesn't do much for me right i want to see good decisions I want to see how they lead a drive after they throw an interception, right? That's what's going to show me something, right? Do they put it behind them or do they, you know, uh, uh, let it drag on and they throw another interception or make a bad decision? So uh, anyway, uh, so going back to that guessing game, you can get fooled by, you know, certain quarterbacks, but I think the guys that are leading, the guys that have presence, uh, you know, the, the guys through the years that have been to that camp, you see that, and you see that translating to success in the NFL. So NBC this Friday, 8 o'clock. It's the Capital One College Bowl. It's a trivia contest. You and kids from all over the country. Friday, NBC, tell us what to expect. Well, I mean, we're excited to be back. I'm a big believer in bowls. Grew up going to all the Sugar Bowls. Um I remember when I was being recruited, Lou Holtz told me, Peyton, if you want to play for national championships and play in the Orange Bowl every year, come to Notre Dame. If you want to play in the Pool Island Weed Eater Bowl, then maybe go somewhere like Ole Miss, right? So I'm like, wow, that's uh, that's recruiting right there in a nutshell. So College Bowl, uh, there were no opt-outs, which was impressive, which is rare for a bowl game now, right? Because it, uh, if it's not the national championship, not everybody's playing in the bowl game. We had 16 teams this year, Colin, competing. Um, um, uh, last year, didn't have as many teams. So it was more competitive. We had all different teams. We had rivals, right? We had Georgia versus Florida. We got Texas versus Oklahoma, um, uh, Michigan, Ohio State. So, so we got the rivals. We had fans there. We had a live audience. We had the band. We had mascots. Cooper is going into the live audience with an open mic, which 
you know, the outtakes on those interviews, I, I can promise you, is a tape you want to see. Uh, and so it felt like it felt like a game, right? My job to ask the question co- correctly. I had an hour pronunciation meeting every morning. I didn't know what these words meant, but I, I wanted to know how to pronounce it because I wanted to give the kids the correct question. Half the time I pronounced it incorrectly. They still get the question right which tells you how smart these kids are. So it was just better overall from an enthusiasm, a spirit, uh, the competitiveness. Uh, Cooper and I had a lot of fun doing it. But the one thing that didn't change was the fact that these kids are all playing for scholarships. And that's the only reason I got involved in the Capital One College Bowl, because some of these kids' lives are getting changed, right? The last place team gets $5,000 each toward their college education. The winning team gets over 120,000 each toward their college education. That's paying off student debt. That's giving them a chance to go to grad school. That's letting their little brother have a chance to go to college. And so to witness that firsthand and hear some of these kids' stories and and the adversity in their lives, uh, it was a special uh, season and uh, looking forward to getting it started this fall. The, um, you know, it's kind of a gift that you get along with your brother so well. And I think you don't know any other way, right? But, you know, a lot of families don't. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm divorced, remarried, fam- I, I've seen a lot of different um, fissures in families over the course of my life. My sister and I now are very close. But at the point you are in your life, it's business, it's fun, it's laughs, it's the Manning cast. Uh, the Capital One College Bowl. Is um, is this how you wanted it to be post-football? Like, like have some stuff fallen into your lap? Was this a plan? Is it is it working the way you wanted to? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, on your first note, uh, I, just, just giving a little shout out to my parents. I remember them telling us often as kids, if you ever really want to disappoint us, just don't get along with each other as brothers. That'd be one way to really disappoint us. So we always kind of remember that. Not saying we didn't fight, argue, all those things. Right. We all had each other's backs. And I think that was just kind of a lesson my, my parents preached to us, uh, which is a good which is a good philosophy. You know, you know the best advice I got uh, was from Tony Dungy the year uh, that I retired. As he said, Peyton, don't make any rash decisions. Don't go sign up to do this right away, right? Uh, Take a coaching job, right? Get involved in an organization, uh, go into broadcasting. Just take a year and just sort of let everything calm down, right? You know, enjoy your first fall of not having to stay up till midnight watching film and grind. Right. uh, I did a little health check uh, around uh, November of 2016, my first fall off, and the doctor said, wow, you're your stress level's a lot lower. I was like, you think? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, sure. not playing, I'm not dealing with the Patriots third down package this week. I'm uh, playing <laughs> golf at noon with my, my friend Eric. Uh, so, uh, and, and, the, and the last thing Tony said was, I think you'll learn in that year, maybe not exactly what you want to do, but what you don't want to do. And, and that really helped a lot. And I just kind of decided after that year that, um, I did not want to go into coaching. I didn't think I'd be a very good coach, right? I was good at calling plays when I was playing quarterback. I'm not very good when other people are playing quarterback, hence my sixth grade, you know, offensive coordinator uh, uh, job so far. Uh, every time, you know, uh, Jim Sorgi or, or, or Brock Osweiler went in, sometimes they let me call plays in the preseason, and I sucked at it, right? Three and out <laughs> front every single time. So, I learned I didn't want to do that. And then I learned, you know, on the broadcasting that um, the commitment to to be gone every weekend, that that there are no home games when it comes to broadcasting, doing it the right way, like Tony Romo does it, Chris Collinsworth, the late John Madden started it, right? Go watch practice, go interview the teams, right? Be there hands-on. It's the only way to do it well. It's a a four-day commitment. Um, I wanted my fall weekends uh, to be to be free uh, because for 20 something years they weren't. And so uh, I kind of learned what I did not want to do. And I've just kind of found different things along the way that kind of popped up because I didn't jump into something right away. 
And you know, now I get to do you know two shows with, with each of my brothers, right? Eli and I get to watch pro football from our houses. Uh, I do it from my neighbor Scott's garage. Eli does it in his back house. And we get to watch it and, you know, laugh and make fun of each other. And we have Snoop Dogg watch it with us. I mean, are you kidding me? There's no way I would have thought I could do something like that. Cooper and I spent a week together in Atlanta with these college students, watching them compete, watching them show off how smart they were. We went to dinner every night after each show. And uh, so sometimes by being patient and waiting, some good opportunities can come your way. When you deal with young people, I did. I tell, I tell my kids this all the time. You're so much smarter than I was. I didn't have Google. Oh. It's incredible. Like, I, 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 I'm like an idiot. Like, I, my son at 16. I'm like, you. He asks questions about life. I'm like, I didn't even think about that stuff till I was like 36. When you're doing this Capital One College Bowl, and whenever I hear people complain about young people, I'm like, time out. These people are, young people are crazy, um, ambitious, willful, smart, empathetic. I'm kind of blown away by young people. I mean, Cooper and I were so impressed uh, with, with all of them. I mean, all 16 teams, there's three, there's three students on each team. Uh, just how fast they were getting some of these questions. I hadn't even finished the question yet, which to me, like the last three words were kind of what made the question unique. And, you know, some student from BYU or Washington knows it right away. And, and so anyway, yeah, I was impressed. Uh, they're competitive. Uh, the kids on College Bowl this year were not only smart, but they were engaging. They were entertaining. Man, they high five each other when um, somebody else gets the question right. But they also like applaud the other team for getting right. Like the sportsmanship uh, was very, uh, uh, very much on display as well. Uh, they all love their schools, which to me is important, right? Kids shouldn't use college as a stepping stone just to get to the next step. Hey, I'm going to go here and just get out. I mean, enjoy your four years there in college. Nobody had more fun in his college time than my brother Cooper. I can promise you that he didn't get to play football. He got injured, but, he, he became a social legend at Ole Miss, without a doubt. The four years I had at Tennessee, uh, the best four years I had, you know, Eli, you know, had to redshirt because, you know, uh, uh, you know, freshman year, another senior was playing. He is so glad he had five years there at Ole Miss. And so that's my message to all young people. Enjoy every single bit of the college experience. Yeah, I just read Phil Mickelson's book by Alan Shipnuck, and he stayed at Arizona State. He could have gone pro, and Phil was like, I'm not going to leave Arizona State. This is the greatest time. <laughs> Why would right. you leave Arizona State? What's the hurry? What's the hurry? Yeah, so I, I, went to a, I went to Eastern Washington University, so we didn't have this wild social life. But I, I tell my kids this all the time. You will never rely on people you've never met before more. You'll drink too much. You'll get a parking ticket. I got sideswiped. I got T-boned in an intersection next to a frat, and people came pouring out of the house. I'm like, <laughs> you feel – I mean, you know, listen, we all have bad judgment at 19. I did. I still do sometimes. So to that, um, it's been great. You're busy. The Capital One College Bowl. So when is this – let's give this a tease. When do you do it, and when does it air, and how do I watch it and consume it? It starts this Friday. It's on NBC. It's going to be on every Friday night uh, this fall. It's a uh, competition, 16 teams. Picture March Madness. Uh, there's elimination games. There's a little bit of a wild card round. If a certain team gets beat in the first round, maybe they have a chance to still get in it uh, to advance to the next level of eight teams. But it's going down to the wire. And on that last uh, Friday night, uh, there is – there's two teams left, winner take all. It's it's an exciting time. I'm just telling you, I'm watching it as we're kind of cutting out the you knows and the uhs and the uh, all the stutters that I had, and I'm getting excited even though I know what's going to happen. So uh, uh, if you love if you love college, if if you love you know uh, competition, if you love passion and spirit and uh, pageantry college bowls for you and uh it's uh academically it's uh it's extremely challenging and fun to keep up with as well all right you're a busy guy you didn't need to do this uh i appreciate it 
Um, anytime you need to promote something, call us. And uh, you're, you've always been really good with your time for us so and me. So I appreciate it. Colin, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, two things. Uh, is, is, is the reason Cooper Cup went to Eastern Washington because of you and your experience there? Was that, is that? He was a no-star recruit from Yakima. I am not the reason. In fact, it's only recently that I've been mentioned as a notable person who went there. I think Got it. the first 25 years of my career, I didn't even make Eastern's notable people. <laughs> so Got now it. I'm notable, which is a big deal for me. Got it. And on a second note, I, I forgot to ask, I thought, forgot to add Troy Aikman into that broadcasters that are doing it the right way. Troy over at ESPN now, you know, doing it, doing it the, uh, the real way. Eli and I will be making fools out of ourselves uh, over on ESPN too, but uh, uh, Troy does it the right way. Good seeing you, man. Thank you, Colin.